Welcome back to Time Out with the Sports Doctor podcast, where life, sports, and medicine intersect. We're very glad that you continue to support this podcast. You can get the information on any platform uh, where podcasts are played, as well as getting the video content on YouTube. But if you want to just get one place to find all the content, go to my website at drgarrickthesportsdoctor.com and you will find everything on that website. So without further ado, let's get into this episode. Welcome back to another episode of Time Out with the Sports Doctor. And I have a treat for you tonight. So I want everybody to go ahead, grab your popcorn, you know, go ahead, run some restroom, do whatever you got to do, because once you get started, you're not going to want to miss a second of this story. We have Demarcus LaFleur, a.k.a. Filminati. You know, I didn't know his real name, so I had to research him because it was Filminati or nobody, you know, That's ever true. since That's I true. met him, which September 2022, you know, I thought that I'm walking around the hotel just introducing myself to everybody. I'm the new kid on the block. Little did I know, you know, you were just kind of taking off with it as well. But hey, welcome to the show. As I mentioned, Filminati, he is a videographer award-winning cinematographer yes, sir. Thank everybody you, enjoyed you. all the content from the last year of seeing coach prime but what you didn't know if you were to flip that camera around for a selfie who you would have saw on the other side of that camera is filminati so welcome to the podcast thank you thank you thank you man i'm ecstatic to be here like i said oh like you said i'm sorry we both started out as feeling like the new kids on the block so uh, just having that similarity while we were you know there at GSU, it kind of helped us gel together every time we see each other, you know, passing by a bump fist, you know, keep encouraging and motivating each other to keep doing what we're doing out there. So it's pretty cool thing, yeah. man. Absolutely. So, you know, let's start there because there is some more JSU history, I know, but let's talk about how you got into the whole Coach Prime era and how that all started. Okay, so uh, with that, I was doing uh, short videos, promo videos and things like that. And I saw one of the football players kind of comment under the video that I did for the artist. Um, and it was Nugget, John Warren. So yeah. I reached out to him to do a free workout video. And after that, in that same day, um, I asked him, did he know anyone that was a part of the media team, if he could call them? So he ended up calling the guy. Uh, my guy Q, you know, so had a conversation with Q and he also explained to me that I would have to go through the proper channels, you know, to be able to do do the things that I wanted to do with film. So a couple of days went by and I put out the workout video um, and Q ended up calling me back like, hey, man, we, we like that. You know, we like that style. We like that work. We want to, you know, try you, have you come to practice for a couple of days. So a couple of days, as you can see, went from monday tuesday wednesday and then it was all right can you come back next week and you know it just continued to flow like that so coach prime still wasn't there just yet so by the time everything got rolling um he came and i was just you know out there doing my thing as i normally was and he looked over at me he was like dog who are you <laughs> <laughs> One of the and media i was circus, like right? <laughs> yeah you know i was like i'm doing out and he was like who is filming out you know like he had no <laughs> No knowledge of me whatsoever. So um, I explained to him uh, who I was and how I introduced myself to everyone that was a part of the media crew. And, you know, they had already okay me to be out there. And he was just like, well, all right, let me know next time. <laughs> I was right. like, this is my first time. Okay. All right. So that happened. And our relationship obviously got better as well. Um, I got a chance to actually understand what it is that he likes to see on video, whether it be sweat dripping from a player's forehead or the foot touching the line when they're running drills and things like that. So when I first started out, I was trying to cater to his song choice, I would say, and I put uh, Kirk Franklin, Brighter Day. Um, he called a meeting with the media crew. He was like, who made this video? I mean, I'm confident in my work, so I was like, <laughs> It was like me, I did. He was like, uh, you know this song? I was like, yes, sir. He's like, what song is it? Kurt Franklin, Brighter Day. He was like, now where's the Brighter Day? Now, mind you, it was like how it is outside right now, a hundred right. and something, sun <laughs> blazing. And I'm thinking, you know, that I may have chose the right song, you know, to 
I guess, lead everybody in the right direction of what was to come for GSU football. And everything just went totally left. He was like, no, I want to see sweat dripping. You know, I want to see players out there in that actual element. Yeah, they grit, they grind. And normally I would say people would take offense, you know, and especially in the creators, people would take offense uh, to someone giving their work that type of – I wouldn't call it backlash, but it felt like backlash it, it, when it first came off. But I had to understand that there are different creative point of views. So I, I looked at it and I listened, uh, you know, of course, yes, sir, and got back to it the next day with the new video. And, of course, I got the grid to grind. I Instantly, I was all in everybody's face, cameras, drip. Sweat on the camera, you know, just different stuff like that. So, you know, and I sent it to him. He was like, exactly. This is what we're looking for. So let's continue to keep it up. And the story just continues in a crazy, crazy, different, different arrangement of events. After those couple of practices, I think the XFL, HBCU showcase came mm-hmm. to Jackson State. So, um, and I had no idea what an XFL was. I was leaving practice one day. I think his manager... Was it Sam? I think it was Sam that may have called me and asked would I be able to work the XFL because they needed a local camera guy. And I was like, sure. It went from just thinking I was going to do a regular behind the scenes video to actually working for the XFL. So with I, the rock, right? Yeah, with the rock, you know, so it was crazy. <laughs> so, and that's a whole nother crazy part to the story. So before I get to that, it, right. it, it, that whole day was crazy. So I'm um, there. You no, know, before the XFL came, we had to, you know, everybody a part of the media crew that's going to be there for the XFL. You all have to check in through emails and things like that. So um, we all checked in and they sent me like this pamphlet. And I was like, what is this? And it's like just simply just telling me where my camera needs to be stationed when I'm recording uh, broad jumps, board jumps, whichever one it is. Um, I did the tight end drills, recorded the tight end drills, and also linemen, offensive linemen and defensive linemen drills. And these are videos that they, you know, need for sure, you know, to scout these players, you know, so promotion and to scout these players. So for me to be in that position and I just went from, you know, doing small videos and things like that and just jump straight to the working for the XFL. Like, that's a part of my appreciation story with Coach Prime. And also within that day, before the day even got started, I uh, check in at the XFL as media uh, and I'm sitting down, putting my camera together. And Coach Prime, ride, he's riding around the track uh, at GSU and he has Miss Constance on the um, cart with him. I didn't know who she was. Right. I didn't know anyone. Anyway, you know, I'm just, yeah. I'm new to everything. So he stopped, you know, he paused on, on the brakes real fast. And he was like, he, I, I guess he didn't know I was out there. Like, he was like, what right. you doing out here, dog? <laughs> I was like, I'm working at for the XFL. And I guess that spoke volumes to him right in that moment. He turned to Miss Constance. He was like, I want you to meet this young man. You know, uh, he's, he's been working hard ever since I met him. Keep his head down. Um, and I think we could, you know, have some more family opportunities. So Miss Gunson pulled me to the side, let me know she going to have an opportunity for me. Cool. Hold I on just a second, because let me, you know, what you shared in the beginning, as you were talking about, you know, you made this first video. You know Coach Prime, you know his faith, you know mm-hmm. his religious ties. True. So you tried to alter Illuminati to fit in, right? Instead of kind of being authentic you or what what would you say about that I definitely I definitely had to find a different approach I would say that because I'm very much versatile when it comes to film yeah Uh, whether it be recording someone's lawn service all the way up to doing you know documentaries so it's like I knew how to make that switch right but yeah it was it was a little how do I want to call it? I was a little protective at first of, of yeah. my creativity uh, because I also before even coming to the practice, mind you, I had all of these different videos on my page that weren't sports related. Right. Everything was more so a birthday party or a wedding or this, that, and the third. You know, I had to find a way how to get the film look the approach within sports and I also right. have to give 
have to pay homage always, always, always to my guy, Austin ASAP Visuals. When I first got in, like, mind you, like I said, I didn't know what my approach was going to be. After, like, my second or third practice, he kind of DM'd me and just started sending me videos of different colleges, Power 5, HBCU, whoever it was, and just kind of telling me to watch these videos. He's also sent me some of his videos from him working with Devoted Dreamer 7 on 7, um, the Mario Davis team. So I also like to say that some of the things that I learned and style-wise kind of Austin influences. So it's a lot of kudos to him in my progress and my process, I would say. But yeah, going back to the XFL day, man, it was it was all like just happening so fast. I get there, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm like, man, you working for the XFL? <laughs> then Coach Prime see me. He right. Paul's on breaks and, you know, introduce me to Miss Constance. Miss Constance, go ahead and, you know, throw me in the water with the Sharks. Say, hey, you, you want to be in the film industry? Let's go. So um, I'm, I'm doing drills and I'm doing drills, mind you, like you mentioned earlier, the Rock is there. The Rock is bypassing my tent to go to the next tent right next to me where all news outlets were giving him interviews. Um, and as I'm yelling out, Nick's clear, calling out that number and everything like that, like, I guess – I don't know what it was, but he he just walked past, looked at me. He was like, I like the job you're doing. Keep up the good work. And, you know, I, I'm hearing all the jazz you play behind me chattering. You know, everybody that was standing around because they was like, why he singled me out out of everybody? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out why he looked at me and said I like – and I guess if it's there, it's there, you know, and I don't mean to brag, but right. – that's the only way I could kind of explain it, you know? So it was like, that was a pretty cool moment of that day. That was a moment where you wish you would have been recording, right? you know? And somebody I'm not even, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I wish somebody would have been recording that moment. And, you know, that kind of boosted my morale for sure. Cause it's like, when somebody, you know, just points you out of that, or their caliber, when somebody just points you out just out of nowhere, it's like, all right, yeah. cool, cool, cool. I'm doing something. So that happened. And uh, continue to go to practice after their exit field. They going back to JSU's football practices, making more videos, getting better and better. Coach Prime giving me the thumbs up. And that was actually a cool experience to be able to simply just text him the video that I just made and he give me his exact feedback. Right. Not yeah. through three different people to t try to tell me. Like, so that was another part of us actually being on a, you know, first name basis, I would say. Yeah. You know. Whether I'll be walking around the field and he'll just call me, film it out and come here, you know, and <laughs> it's just like, oh, he really know, you know, he know who I am. Yeah. But not, it was cool. I, I knew he knew who I was because I'm right there in his face every day, you know. But yeah, so continue to go to practice. And like I said, it's still, the XFL is still not hitting me yet that I just did that, that The Rock just spoke with me, you know, I'm on ESPN, people seeing me in the background and stuff like that. So, I left practice one day, and like I said, manager his manager calls me again. You don't know if it's good or bad. <laughs> I answered. <laughs> when I, I answered screwed up. Phone. Right, right, right. I answered the phone. I was like, hey, what's up? He was like, um, what's up, man? Uh, do you have anything planned for this, that, and the third? If not, uh, we might need you to go with us somewhere. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm available. And he was like, all right, you know, send me your, your information. Uh oh, we have to go to Colorado. And this is way before everything. This is just right. put that out there because everybody yeah. was on my back. I didn't <laughs> know, but it's still kudos to coach. But everybody, not, I mean, not everybody. Um, he called me and told me to send my information. And at the end of the phone call, he was like, "Oh yeah, because we're going on a, a private jet. Send your birthday as well." I was like, <laughs> and it, in the back of my mind, it was a block party. But on the, out of my mouth, I had right. To, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. I had to say, yeah. I had to say, yeah, I got you, I got you. I sent it in just a sec. I got off that phone. I'm talking about. I was like, <laughs> I was like, he just. I know I'm. I know I'm not tripping. He just said a what? Right. But yeah. So days come, a couple of days go by. And, you know, the trip is now here. We're about to go to Colorado, so he could speak. I think it was a leadership thing. He had to go speak at Unveil, Colorado. So I went out there. And like I said, man, that was the second, that's, that's number two to my appreciation, you know, the coach to where it's like he could have called anybody else, but instead he asked whoever requested, you know, me. That sure. It was just me, coach, and, you know, his manager. And that was another situation where you're, you're in close counters and it's like you can actually understand the person and you know how they operate and just how they thinking, you know. 
we get to have those moments and it was pretty cool because a lot of people just know the star, you know, I would say. And, you know, I got to understand the person. So that was, you know, cool. And even, you know, just he asked you, you know, just how you doing? How your day going? Like, ain't God good? And I'd be like, you don't understand. I'm on private jet. Right. Right. You don't know. God is the greatest. But, um, yeah, man, it was pretty cool to, to do all that. And then it was all in one day. Like, it was just, you know, that, that whole experience of going to a whole other side of the U.S. and coming back to your city in one day, you know, it's like – how do I even, you know, it's still a, I just keep replaying the moment, you know, in my yeah. head. So that was a, the next part of it. Um, and then, like I said, after that, and the season came and it was, you know, wheels to the ground and everything got to rolling. Like I was first introduced to the production crew. That's, that's what was next. I'm sorry. Everything started to come around. They've already filmed his first couple of scenes out in when you LA. said production, you're talking about Amazon, right? So Amazon yeah, Prime, it, was, you it was it was sold, I believe, to Amazon. Don't quote me on that, but I know yeah. that's where it aired. Right. But the production company uh, is DG West, and they're based out of LA, and they hire like mainly freelancers. So it's like it's an opportunity, literally, for everyone who's on set, whether you've been doing filming since you you know came out the womb or you just right. got in, and it's like. I had the imposter syndrome and I was like, how am I here? You know, like, yeah, it's crazy. Like I started from taking pictures and, you know, the polar rules where you got to air them out, you know? So I got introduced to everyone and it was a happy moment for me, yeah. but let the production crew tell it. It was a scary moment for them because they're coming from LA. They're coming from New York, Vegas, Denver, wherever it may be. And they're like, oh, snap, we got a local. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Is this in Miami? If you're enjoying this episode, don't wait to the end to share it. Share it now. Share this with a friend or a colleague that you think might find value in this information. And then also make sure that you click and leave us a five-star review and give us feedback because we really value your feedback and your input. Now back to the episode. Uh, no, this, the, the first time I ever worked with them, it was they came to the school. Okay. My first couple of days, they came to school and started shooting practices. So I was introduced to them. Um, and, you know, like I said, they, I mean, they expressed it to me. They were like, man, right. when they told, when they said we had a local, we were like, oh my God. Right. Uh, this, that, and the third. <laughs> Whose cousin is this? Whose cousin is this? <laughs> Thank you. So um, time went on on the first shoot date and they just kind of filled me out. And on the second shoot date, the director and the main the main DP, the guy with the camera on his shoulder, they were looking over my shoulder as I was shooting. And I kind of heard them mumbling, but I didn't know what they were talking about. But they pulled me yeah. to the side later on that day and they were like, well, Marcus, you really got a good eye. Like we didn't expect, you know, we didn't expect you to be able to compose your shots in the way that you do and, you know, things like that. And I'm like, oh, you know, like, yeah, I, I yeah, do this. I'm the real deal. I'm the real deal, whether it look like it or not, where I come from a place that doesn't produce the real deal as often as other places do. Like, I've been doing my due diligence of studying and researching and networking with a lot of different people that are in the film industry way before I met you people, you know, way before I met you guys. And for what it's worth, everything that I have learned before I met y'all, I'm using it to, you know, my best ability, whether I know the name of it, whether right. I know this whatever, yeah. I'm, the camera movements, um, learning how to deal with my brightness, anything. Like I would sit on YouTube and listen to a guy over in Germany talk to me. I'll cut the subtitles on, but I'm going to listen to him talk to me about However long he's going to talk to me about. And and the reason do I, that I cut subtitles on as well, I was being funny, but it's also a reason to it too because I'm a visual learner. So if I'm if I'm reading it, I guess when, when I'm about to do it for some reason, fo photographic memory, like that one sentence will pop up in my head how I saw it on the TV and I know how to do it, you know, verbatim like that. So that kind of went on. We kind of continued to um, film and – Mind you, like I said, I, it was a lot of stuff that was new to me. We had production meetings, crew calls, 
they had lingo that I had never ever heard in my life being on right. film set. So, but like I said, mind you, you gotta out, you gotta act like you've been there, right? right? So hey, fake it till you were, make it. Yeah, you've been on a private jet at this point. You're good. <laughs> I, I'm good. I can bet it. I'm there. So um, you know, we were we were filming one day and they asked me to go get some beer tape. And I said okay, but you know, I was like, okay, beer tape, what is that? <laughs> so I, I pulled, I didn't ask the director because I don't want to make it seem like I don't know yeah. what I'm doing. So I pulled the, the last, to the last person you will ever ask anything would probably be the sound guy because they always got headphones in and nobody messing with them when they got the boom mic like, just holding it over right. first. So I pulled him to the side. I was like, hey, man, I don't mean to sound crazy, but uh, what's beer tag? You know, he gave me the explanation, getting B-roll, slow-mo, whatever it may be. Uh, and I was like, ah, okay, I got you. So now I'm hip. So every time, you know, he calls it out, I'm boom, boom, boom. I'm working. And it was just those type of things that um, a lot of people didn't see that I was doing for myself. Right. And this whole process from the start of filming Coach Prime documentary all the way up into the Atlanta game. Yeah, the celebration ball. I'm sorry. I was literally in class while I was filming the documentary because these these new ways of filming, these new lenses, these new cameras, uh, memory cards, whatever it may be that I'm learning how to man, that I'm learning how to film with, everything is relatively new, even though I've been researching it, it's in hand relatively new. And you have to learn how to go through all of these different menus and everything like that. So I would honestly say the reason that the thing that kept me in the game and not being one of those people that get fired from a production crew so fast was being able to adjust and yeah, that's, not, that's so important it is it is and and not also i was i wasn't afraid to make mistakes not saying that they knew that i was new to it right but to understand within myself that I'm going to at least have to bump my head at least once or twice. Like I'm not going to get yeah. the three times, but I at least got to bump my head once or twice to actually, you know, know what I'm really doing. So yeah. the documentary, it, it continued to go on. And like I said, we started to travel, you know, you started to see me flourish across the field. They started giving me bigger roles of uh, following coach prime and things like Your that. T-shirt changed it. too. You, you know, started wearing their prime video T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Every everything was starting to change, man. I got the prime hoodie and everything like that. So it was like it's really happening. At first yeah. I had it, like I said, I had the imposter syndrome. Sometimes it still happens. But yeah. um I had the imposter syndrome, like, man, how did I get here? And honestly, man, God rest my grandmother's soul. She told me to do all of this before right. I even thought to do it. Like in her voice, you need to go out there. With yeah. Deion Sanders, you know, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm good. I, I I got my different gigs. I'm doing weddings. I'm doing um, club promo videos, whatever it may be. So I'm cool. Music videos, whatever it is. But she was telling me, like, you need to connect with, you need to come out. She was from Gardena. Yeah, she was from Gardena. She was telling me, um, you need to come out here to L.A. and, you know, network with some of these people. And I was just blowing it off. And it's like, yeah. now that I'm doing it. It's like I be hearing her in the back of my head, you know. It's like I told you, I told you, little dappy head self. I told you, you know, that's how she'll be. That's how she'll yeah. be. But you know, so that's another. That was another reason that continued to push me through it because, of course, it would get tough at times to where the workload may be crazy to where I have to do documentary footage and I also have to take my my camera out and do videos for the football team right. to where now I got. I got to do, you know, dib and dab on both sides, and it's just getting crazy. And you still got the whole element of everybody thinking that you – so, you know, up here, I mean, of course, it is a very, 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 very huge opportunity, but it comes with a very, very, very huge amount of responsibility. And sure. you and have sacrifice, to learn how to, right? And, and sacrifice. You got a little man at the house, you know. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. Oh, you know. man. That is something I'm still trying to adjust to. In all yeah. honesty, because you don't grow up thinking you're going to have children and traveling, have a traveling job, you know, and, and yeah. having a traveling job is very much more demanding than waking up and going to a nine to five, believe it or not, because try, you have to manage flights, you got to manage your sleep schedule because you're going from coast to coast and now your body's still on California time, mm -hmm. two hours behind and you're trying to go to sleep. 
and it's like everything's crazy. You still got work to get done. You still right. got to live your normal life. You have to come home, make time for yourself, before yourself, you know. You, well, I mean, self and children is the dib and dab because you don't want to thin yourself out too much to where, you know, you're too stressed for your child or your children. So yeah. you have so, to learn how to you know, Just to give people an idea of what you've been doing, since the beginning of the year, how many states slash countries have you been in mm-hmm. cities? I remember Ooh. you were keeping up with it at one point. <laughs> All right. So in total, I would say I've been to 20. Okay. I just went to North Carolina. So that's going to be 27. I've been in 27 states out of 50. Now the whole, the entire 27 wasn't from just coach prime in particular right. i would give that maybe five out of it but beforehand i had already been to at least 15 16 states already you know just with you know filming before coming to gsu so yeah. this is just the in total number but moving with the documentary crew after uh coach prime just continue you know to add on to the state mm-hmm. so yeah man it's been it's been a journey but I gotta, I st- hold on. I gotta still keep it in the in the coach prime. I did take us out. I'm sorry. So I, I would say the best trip for me with that would be, hmm. I have never been to Jacksonville. So um, you know we flew and everything, and I was able to get you know footage. That was like one of the first games where I didn't have to film for the documentary crew because they had another guy coming out that was just going to get B-roll footage of the game and things like that. So, well, I had to film, but it wasn't like for the full four quarters, right? So that was a fun game for me simply because I actually got to, you know, kind of be in the element of a a sports videographer, uh, you know, how they kind of flow through a game and how they bounce from sideline to touchdown and things like that. So that was cool. And I also had to, like I said, Stick with Coach Prime and getting his reaction for the game for the documentary. So you so get tell to, people like yeah. how the cameras literally never cut off with Coach Prime. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Some days you're literally working 14 hours because you have to. If the team is getting to the, if the team is getting to the facility, and it's like I'm getting tired now just thinking about it. I put my hand on my head. <laughs> If the team is getting to the facility at 6 30, we're going to be there an hour early. No matter what's going on, whether it's Coach Prime, whoever it is, we're going to be there an hour early because we have to prep cameras. We have to get to the location. We have to set up whether it's interview or figure out where we're going to be stationed and this, that, and the third. So all of that takes about an hour. So we had a lot of 5 30. 5 a.m., 6.30s, everything was no no later than 7 when it came to filming, uh, simply because we have to be there an hour early. So the, the cameras were nonstop rolling from 5 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon, 6 in the afternoon, 7, however long coach day go, whether he got to do an engagement after practice, whether it was going to be a family dinner after practice, uh, even on Sundays, you think you're going to have an off day? No, we got to go film Coach Sunday dinner with his family. So it's yeah. like you have to also understand when – that's something I didn't understand, though. When you're getting in the documentary crew, it's literally on set all day. So my first week or two, man, I was I was catching my head because I was like, all right, you are in a great opportunity, brother, but Lord. Yeah. Well, I remember I'm one game, tired. post game, I came up to you. I'm like, Phil Minotti, you all right? <laughs> that may have been one of them 14 hour days. Yeah, I think it may have been right. one of the games where it was rain. Okay, that's it. May have been that game where it rained. We played Southern. Yeah, so, so, no, no, no. In, uh, oh, we the, okay, at home. At home. Yeah, yes, we played yeah. Southern at home. So it rained, <laughs> yeah. you know, at the rain delay. Um, yeah. And I'm thinking we weren't going to film. You know, it's raining. And. Shh, <laughs> now, they had they had ponchos. They had garbage bag. The production crew said, "Nah, we film in the rain." And I think that the was ESPN my best. left, but y'all was still there, right? We were still there. I was, I was baffled, but that was my honest first time understanding how much the cameras roll. 
the cameras are going to roll regardless. We're going to put rain covers on these cameras. We're going to mm-hmm. put a garbage bag across the smaller cameras. We're going to give the crew punchos, and we're going to go out there, and we're going to get our shots because once the documentary come out, you're going to see the team, you're going to see the coaches, you're going to see everybody, the fans, everybody out there in the rain. Right. And slow-mo range is dripping, and it's going to mean something, you know? Right. And I had to understand that in that moment. But, man, when you say cameras don't stop rolling, man, <laughs> it, it got to points at times where we also had to remind ourselves that sometimes they do because the heat, you know, it's bouncing off that turf so hard. And mm. whether it be the camera or whether it be you that may overheat, you have to think about yeah. those as well. Sure. So that's another thing that plays into the production crew of having teams. So we, we also had a three camera team. One A team has a camera, B team has a camera, and C team has a camera. So regardless of who's coming off break or who's going on break, who needs a break, it's going to be a camera that's able to bounce from what they're doing to come over, you know, and, and continue to get the shot so regardless it's still cameras rolling (laughs) and and you know there's something that starts to get drilled in your head to where you don't even know how long it's been that you've been working like it'll be one in the afternoon and you're still thinking it's 10 in the morning because you just been just working just filming 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 just shooting and your day can go by fast, but if it's something like rain or you got a delay, like waiting on a player, waiting on a coach because they got to do something else. Now you're on hold for like two hours instead of, you know, interviewing, you know, that makes the day longer. Um, and those would be the only times where where things would be a, a halt, you know, to where cameras would stop rolling. But other than that, yeah, our cameras are rolling continuously for sure. Yeah. So this brings us to the end of this episode. we we'll follow up with us next week for part two of this episode to see how Feminati continues to level up and how he continues to take his career to new heights. But in the meantime, go over to the website uh, that's listed below, Dr. Derek, thesportsdoctor.com. Join our VIP mailing list. You know, check out our YouTube channel. And thank you for following this podcast and thank you for helping it continue to grow. In the meantime, stay safe and be blessed. With the sports doc, uh-huh. keep our head right in the game. We ain't never stopping. You are now tuned in. Trust you don't want to miss. This is where life, sports, and medicine.